This is one of those videos I've been wanting to do just to satisfy my own curiosity. What is the best mic to record video on your phone? So especially for TikTok, Instagram, social media, I've been keenly observing the weird trends that have come out and selected a variety of mics that represent what I'm seeing out there. And I want to test them for audio quality and also usability. How is it to actually shoot with these? And huge thanks to the sponsor of this video, Riverside FM. They are the best way to record remote interviews, whether it's for social media or a podcast, whatever you need, more about them later. For the test, I wanted to represent the different categories of mics that I see people using all the time, and I chose some of my favorites of each of those categories. So starting from the cheapest, I've got the hilarious mini Amazon microphone. It looks like a joke, but it sounds okay, and it's only $20. Then we've got the classic Apple earbuds. This is the pre-AirPod day where they are wired. This one has a lightning port, so it can plug it directly into an iPhone 14. Generally, you'll see people taking this mic capsule and holding it close to their mouth like that. Also very affordable. Now something more in the professional world, this is called a lavalier mic. This one's the Deity V Lav. And typically for professional use, people would clip the mic to their shirt. In the modern world of TikTok, most people tend to hold it in front of them and talk into it like this, which looks funny to me, but it does sound very good. Then we've got the Rode Video Micro 2. This is like a classic vlog mic. You'd put it on top of a bigger camera, but you can also attach it to your iPhone, put a little rind screen on there. A bigger microphone, generally does sound better. So when you're listening to it, look for a bit more bass and presence. It should sound pretty good. And then the most expensive of the bunch, this is the DJI mic kit, and it is a wireless transmitter and receiver. It has actually two microphones in it. This is great for interviews when you're walking around. Often you'll see people talking directly into it like this. Expensive, but very high quality. It's very important to consider what are people going to be watching on. So in the case of Instagram and TikTok, it'll usually be their phone. If you're going to be posting to YouTube, they might be watching on a TV with better speakers. So I'm going to evaluate it on both, starting by listening back on the phone. Let's start off with the most typical test when you're holding your phone in front of you, taking a selfie. This is what the internal mic sounds like on the phone. This is what the tiny Amazon mic sounds like. This is what the mic sounds like on earbuds. This is what a wired lav mic sounds like when I'm holding it in my hand. This is what a wired lav mic sounds like when it's clipped to my t-shirt. This is what the wireless mic sounds like when I'm holding it in my hand. This is what the shotgun microphone sounds like. This is what the wireless mic sounds like when it's clipped to my shirt. All right, in these first tests where the phone is being held at selfie length away, I think they all come across perfectly clear. You do not need to add an extra microphone to have good audio. I do hear a pretty big difference anytime the mic is clipped to my shirt when I'm holding it in my hand, when it's clipped to my shirt. If you're doing this professionally, you'd probably EQ some of the treble up in those, but I'm not modifying any of these other than balancing the volume that they're coming out at when I'm holding it in my hand, when it's clipped to my shirt, because I assume most people don't EQ their TikToks. The biggest difference I hear when you add a mic other than the iPhone is that it cuts out a lot of that background noise. So if you're in a noisy environment, that's when it's worth adding an additional mic. Next, here's some samples when I'm about 10 feet away from the camera. So this would be more like a documentary style if you're interviewing or on the go. This is the sound of the built-in mic on the iPhone. And this is what the shotgun microphone sounds like. This is what it sounds like through a wireless microphone kit that I'm holding with my hand. This is what a wired lavalier mic sounds like clipped to my shirt running through a wireless transmitter. Now we hear a really big difference of adding a microphone, and this is when I think it's worth buying it. The built-in microphone on the camera is just too far away. You hear a ton of extra noise. And same with that shotgun microphone, the Rode, it's a nice mic, but it doesn't matter when it's far away. It hears everything between the camera and your voice. And I think these differences come through clearly, even from iPhone speakers, you don't need a big sound system to hear it. Now, all these mics are fine for recording yourself, but what if you have an interview to do and that person's not in the room with you? Well, the sponsor of this video is a perfect solution for it, and that's Riverside FM. I've done a bunch of tutorial videos already showing exactly how you can connect to anyone around the world and have a perfect quality audio or video conversation without any lag or hiccups. Even if your internet signal isn't that strong, it's actually recording locally on your computer or your phone, then it sends that up to the cloud as you're talking, and by the end, you have full quality, uncompressed, with no drops, perfect video and audio file to edit later. 
And since we're talking a lot about gear in this video, a huge important tip while you're recording interviews, always use headphones. And the reason for this is that the audio coming out of your computer or your phone, whatever you're talking to the person, that's going to be picked up by the mic that you're using. So I at least have one earbud in all the time so that I can hear them, but my mic isn't picking them up. And Riverside started to put out some really amazing AI tools lately too, like Magic Clips. So if you have a longer conversation, it'll look at everything you said and use AI to find the most interesting segments and turn them into little social media videos. Then you can use Remove Silences to keep the conversation moving and AI captions will automatically caption everything that you said so you don't have to type it in later. Riverside really is becoming the standard. A lot of other YouTubers you've probably watched are using it too. So check them out in the link below. You can get 20% off your individual plan or use offer code Tyler20. Sign up today and thanks again to Riverside for sponsoring this video. Next, we're gonna test voiceover recording. This is usually when you're holding the mic close to yourself to get the best possible audio quality. This is also what you do if you're recording something like a podcast. If you know that the viewer is gonna be listening on good headphones, good audio equipment, definitely get the mic as close to yourself as possible. So when you're listening to these samples, especially listen to what the bass sounds like, it should have a lot more presence. This is what the iPhone's built-in microphone sounds like. This is what the Amazon Novelty Tiny Microphone sounds like. This is what the mic sounds like on earbuds. This is what a wired lav mic sounds like when I'm holding it in my fingers. This is what the shotgun mic sounds like. This is what the wireless lav mic sounds like when I'm holding it in my hand. This is what the wireless lav mic sounds like when it's clipped to my t-shirt. In this situation, listening on my phone, I think these are all a draw. There's not a really good reason to be using anything other than the built-in mic, except there is one time. If you're talking to it and finding that your breath is making a lot of noise, like, like especially when you say a P, there's a bunch of air that comes out. These are called plosives. Pa 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 plosive. Pa 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 plosive. Pa 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 pa. This windscreen actually works amazingly. It's probably the best solution if you're worried about getting those sounds. Then it's very helpful to have one of these fuzzy covers on top of your microphone and then you just don't ever have to worry about it. I care about audio quality as much as anyone, but usability is so important and something you may not think about as much while you're watching a YouTube review. So here's what it's like to use these in the real world. Any of these little mics that you hold close up like this, I think professionals have kind of snickered at it because it looks silly in the traditional audio recording situation. You'd wanna hide the mic so the lab is either under a shirt or here, or you've got a shotgun microphone. That's what's recording right now. There's a shotgun mic hidden out of frame like that. So doing this seems backwards, but the huge advantage of anything that you're holding right in front of you, including these earbuds, is that the audio quality is always good. And a huge advantage of these earbuds over the other two is that it has a lightning cable built into it. So this could be a USB-C cable if you're using Android or maybe iPhone 15. One of the several reasons I don't choose this method is that it's very bad for hearing handling sounds. And I see people holding it like this, but you can often hear it anytime you touch it. So be very careful. Also with the headphones, you can always listen back to what you just recorded. So you just put the headphone in and now you know what you sound like, but that's a challenge with these others. As you plug it in and out of your phone, you can't hear playback. So each time you record, you have to unplug them to listen back to it. If you're gonna be using one of these wireless mic kits, I strongly recommend also having a pair of Bluetooth headphones around like AirPods because that's the only easy way to listen back to what you did without unplugging the device. You can just put the headphones in. But that's also one more thing that complicates this kit. You also have to charge your headphones as well as, you know, the whole mic kit. And any of the ones with long cables, I mean, you're constantly dealing with it. It's getting knotted up in your backpack. That drives me crazy. Also keep in mind with this smaller Deity or any, any of these lav mics when they have a little windscreen like this, it's probably gonna get lost. So you can use it without, you can just talk directly into it, but you're more likely to hear plosives. This little Rode shotgun microphone, I've used a lot on my bigger cameras and I really like it, but it was not very suitable for this environment of attaching it to a phone. First of all, a cold shoe mount like this needs somewhere to attach. So you need either a clamp or a case that has space for it and your whole kit gets a lot bigger. And the signal was often too loud while I was recording and I didn't have any controls to turn it down. So weird thing I'm running into with shotgun mics, which theoretically should have the best audio quality because they're kind of big, 
but they're too loud and none of the iPhone apps are turning them down properly. So I'm using Rode's app built for this mic specifically. And then I've also tried it with the Deity mic. Both of them just come in with a really hot, loud signal. So I've kind of had to hold it further away from myself. There's other mics that do have volume built into it. Maybe that'd be useful in this situation, but this just isn't my favorite for this selection of mics. I'd probably choose either an internal or a different microphone for an iPhone setup. I'd keep this for bigger cameras. Now looking at the most expensive kit here, the DJI wireless. It's the best option in many ways. It gives you the most flexibility, but that also means the most complexity. So if I just unpack this, you can see there's like a ton of accessories that come with it, which is helpful. Like it gives you options, but it's also stuff to lose. Like every time I unpack it, you need to take off and put back on this tiny little lightning adapter. And I have dropped it a few times. It could be pretty easily lost. Fortunately, I haven't yet, but there is just that reliability on more moving parts that if any of them disappear, you can't record. Also with the DJI kit and, and most of the others like it, there's another bag. Everything isn't inside of this case here that carries things like those windscreens. So you have to keep track of both this bigger accessory bag and this. So you can do more, but you can screw it up more easily too. So careful what you wish for. I would only use this as you need it. Try to use something simpler when possible. And this is for more complicated setups. All right, major update. Just before I wrapped up this video, I received a package in the mail. It's the Rode Wireless Pro system. And I think this is now the best purchase when it comes to wireless kits. It's more expensive, even more than the DJI, but it does come with more accessories like their wireless lav two system, very high quality lav microphones. So you get a lot more in it and it's just a smarter package with more professional features. So I just want to throw that into the mix. Um, some of the differences may not matter. If you already have the DJI system, you may not hear the difference, but if you haven't picked up a wireless kit yet, I do think this Rode Wireless Pro is probably the best. You're hearing it now. They also sent me another one at the same time. This is the Rode NTG. This is a larger shotgun mic compared to the one that we posted, but it actually solves a lot of the problems. For example, it has a volume knob on the back. You can see right now it's running through the wireless kit. The quality on this is amazing, but it's a little big for a phone. I just wanted to say like this is probably the best shotgun mic I've seen. It sort of steals a lot of ideas from what Deity was doing, but implements them much better. Anyway, let's listen to those tests one more time in higher fidelity. All right, next up, I'm gonna put in some Sony noise canceling earbuds and see if I can hear a difference. This is what the internal mic sounds like on the phone. This is what the tiny Amazon mic sounds like. This is what the mic sounds like on earbuds. This is what a wired lav mic sounds like when I'm holding it in my hand. This is what the shotgun microphone sounds like. This is what the wireless mic sounds like when I'm holding it in my hand. This is the sound of the built-in mic on the iPhone. And this is what the shotgun microphone sounds like. This is what it sounds like through a wireless microphone kit that I'm holding with my hand. This is what a wired lavalier mic sounds like clipped to my shirt. All right, just listening to it more closely with these, like it's not even over your headphones or big speakers, I can hear a clear difference. To me, the winner is pretty obviously that DJI wireless mic. In terms of clarity, they're all coming through quite well. The earbuds, the lav mic, and even that cheap Amazon mini mic, they all come through very well. So this setup is pretty obviously the best thing for any kind of interview or documentary style. That's why you see it all the time on TikTok and Instagram. But just keep in mind that as you are moving the mic around, it gets quieter and louder depending on the distance. So you can do interviews like this, but just think about where the mic placement is. I think for most of the people, most of the time, the choice is easy. Continue using your phone unless you have specific needs like demonstrated in this video. Now, if you want to know more about either editing your videos, I have a tutorial all about vertical video editing on your computer so you can do it like professionally. And if you click that Riverside link, I also have a great tutorial about how to do remote interviews and edit them. It's way easier than you think. Thanks for watching guys. I'll see you in the next video.